we're doing this. It says it's preparing. This is going live. It says so. Uh, it's setting up my meeting for Facebook Live. Apparently, it takes a moment. And uh, I think we are live. Let's just live. click on that. And hello, everybody. <laughs> Uh, Jim and I are experimenting. Uh, Jim and I are experimenting on Facebook Live. This is Jim Docstater. He is a mediator and uh, also, would I say Haudenosaunee? You are also Haudenosaunee? I'm Haudenosaunee. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I I work on my pronunciations and I'm it's embarrassing because I don't always get it, uh, but I do try. And uh, we were on Facebook Live, I don't know, a month or so ago, and we said that we'd come back and we'd talk about things. We did get some input from folks in terms of what to talk about. We may we may get there. Uh, you never know what Jim and I are going to talk about. Uh, but before we do, I'd like Jim to just take a, a moment to introduce himself and who the heck are you, buddy? Sure thing. Um, so my name is Jim Doxater. I'm Wolf Clan, Cuga Nation. I'm Haudenosaunee from Six Nations. And I'm a mediator. So I do child protection mediation. I do family mediation. I do restorative practices. So I do a lot of conflict resolution in institutions amongst professionals um, out in the community. Um, I'm also a Reiki practitioner and a farmer. So that's, that's who I am. Right I, I, and I love the pictures you post as a farmer because, oh my God, you look like a bloody farmer. Like I, <laughs> you got the overalls, the hat. I right mean, down to the, right down to the core, right to the core. I, it's like, you know, there's, there's a belief in there that if you, if you want to be it, you become it. Right. And when you're it in it, then you are it. That's what's happening. Right. And, and I just, I, I love that role as being a farmer and digging around the dirt. It's my healing. It's where I go to, um, crack myself up and, and be um, and as equal to that as a mediator right you have to be a mediator all the time you know you, you can't mediate here and I go over there and I'm fighting with everybody in the world I gotta I gotta you gotta stay there and then it's it's a it's a difficult place to stay to get into but once you stay there you you can cruise along and know you're gonna be safe that's where I come at it right I, 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 you know, people are never going to know what we're going to talk about half the time. I don't know what we're going to No, we don't know. We don't know neither. Yeah. <laughs> but I, um, what you just said resonated with me. Uh, I, so often I'm counseling, I, likely you as well, where we want people to adopt a new strategy and to get into it and to live it and to find, you know, make that their place. And as I say, the more you practice it, the more natural it becomes. Uh, so I really like what you said. I, I'm a mediator everywhere. And, yeah. you know, if you're a person who's having difficulty get, getting along with others and you finally learn some strategies, we want them to use it everywhere. Everywhere. And, and that, that, that's the hard part is, is you know, life itself, uh, the issue is consistency, right? That's the issue. That if you were consistent in what people were doing, then no one would ever have a complaint about you. You wouldn't have any obstacles. It's when we we run inconsistent, right? But we could point at the person and say, hey, you're inconsistent. But just like you know, once we talk to them about it, well, there's something that has happened that has made you inconsistent. There's something that sits over top of you that that no one else can see that is, is making you inconsistent. And it's when we can address that issue right there, whether it's a mediation or counseling, doesn't matter. We, we, we're presented with problems, right? This is the problem. And as mediators, as, as you know, you're, you're um, helping people through these that we're able to, again, throw them onto a different path and say, look, try this, right? Try this, 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 this strategy, try this way of being. And, and, you know, there's questions that come with that, right? You know, if all of a sudden I said, you, please, can you just act like a clown, right? And you'd be like open, pretty well, but I, I'm going to need some more instructions on how that goes, right? And well, no different than if I say to you, hey, we need you to get a new strategy about what you're doing. I've been in that spot before, right? You're, you're right up against the gate. Someone says, just go down that road and everything will be fine. But you have never gone down that road. Matter of fact, all of your people have warned you about going down that road. And it's such a scary notion. So for, for someone like yourself or me that know they're scared, 
this is where the valuable instruction and, and permission goes, I'll say. Permission to, I, you know, often I give people permission to say, look, at, I permit you to go do whatever is best for you, right? And, and if anyone has a problem with it, tell them to call me, you know? And even though they're not going to call me, I know that's not going to be a thing. In their mind, they're like, wow, someone said it was okay, right? And that's all we need sometimes. Someone just to unlock the gate, push it open and go, look at it. You can go anytime you want, just go. And that that is right where I think being really human with people, being really real with people, understanding of where these problems came from, it's how we just bring that down to it's not a thing anymore. And you give them an opportunity. No one else is going to talk to them like that. We know that out in the world. Um, yeah, but we're patient yeah, with them. Yeah, talk about yeah. no one else will talk to them like that conversation. Yeah, no one else. I, I, I chatted with two sisters uh, earlier today. And first of all, I think every second word out of my mouth was the F word. Uh, <laughs> Because we we that's just how we chat myself yeah. with these two sisters, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, giving them permission to do things, and in particular to say no. Uh, uh, and in their situation, it was about saying no to some uh, inappropriately demanding parents. Yeah, uh, they're going to have to withstand the pushback, but uh, to be validated, to be able to say no, and to get used to that, and then carry on with this new persona. That's Jim, um, I'm switching gears. One of okay. the things we, you know, we chatted for two minutes before going live. Yep. And I was looking for your input, uh, as well as permission, in terms of some of the places we can go. Um, I I told you you were indigenous, like, like you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm Jewish. Um, and it, it's, you know, one of the things that astounds people is hearing that I've uh, had to deal with, in a sense, racism or anti-Semitism anti that I've been beaten up grow, growing up. And it's as recent as 10, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, that was the last time I was called a fucking Jew by another adult. Like, like some of the stuff doesn't quit. Um, and pe people look at me, but, but you're a white man. I, I, I am, and I am privileged as a white guy, but damn it, life seems to have this pecking order. White Christian cisgender male is at the pinnacle. And Excuse then, me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Indigenous happens to be the bottom, and D Indigenous two spirit, and Indigenous two spirit, I think lesbian in, in, in poverty, is the bottom. Yeah, yep. there's this just no. This you're right. This pecking order to life. So I I, I was curious, uh, and and I ask this of many people. I'm curious about their experience of racism, what they think, what they've dealt with, how do they manage, um, how we educate people, how we how we uh, address those folks who are racist. Can we educate them? Um, so I threw all that out at you. Yeah. It's so, huge. Yeah, it's Whatever huge. you want to, whatever yeah. you want to no, no. speak to. And, and just like you described, you know, at a young age, right, is when this, the cement starts getting reported, right? It's, you know, this people are, and in that days, right, um, grade, kindergarten to grade eight, I was in a, a public school in Caledonia, Ontario. And for the most part, I was the one stationary brown kid that was there, Right. And some other brown kids came through, some other ethnicities came through, but short lived, they're in, they're out, they're gone, whatever's happened. But for me, right, I was, I got that experience all the way through. And I thought that was normal. I thought what was normal was if the teachers, principal, te uh, uh, parents, students could say whatever they wanted to me, whenever they wanted, right? And I was called them all the names of, of our names. I didn't even know that were a thing that was with me, right? You didn't even know that was a thing. And at that point in time, I really thought, well, in hindsight, that you're starting to make up names, right? You get me? Like, listen, there's bona fide racist names, don't get me wrong, that are real. But now you can see where I've never heard that before. And are you just making that up? Are you just, because I mean, it, it just sounds made up. It sounds like you're really mad. You don't have the words. You're just going to say whatever you're going to say, right? And, and look at, I endured that time. And, and, you know, I had a grandpa who, um, he fought in the war. He was, he was this kind of the staunch man who, you know, people didn't fuck with him. Right. I'm just straight up. And 
he was one who told me, and that's what the saving was, is look, at, next time someone says something to you, you punch them right in the mouth, right? Punch them in the mouth. He goes, they will not say anything anymore. Matter of fact, the people that see it won't say anything anymore. I put that theory to a test, right? And, and turned out he was right, right? Because if you hit somebody in front of other people and they go down, the hesitancy to come at you is zero, right? And then to know that the trigger is there, that you'll do it again, right? Anytime you want, we'll just do it. And no trouble ever came because it was all over racism, right? It was like the teachers even knew the fight was over some kid calling me this. So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. nothing ever got said about it, right? Nothing got, no, just nothing got said. And you just lived your so life you, like that. So you, you, in a sense, you got away with this as a strategy yeah. and it yep. worked. And people worked. understood that if you ever did that, it's because somebody's being an asshole. 100 okay i just didn't randomly go and punch people in the mouth i, I have no desire but if you said something you're I'm, i got your eye right now we're gonna go and you just live you know i go home i tell my grandpa and he'd be proud of me he'd be like good job because they say it again you all come down if his dad comes down there you tell me i'll come too so it was just this like being part of the mob right it was like you know if, if someone if someone was bigger than me talking, i'd say listen you want me to go get my grandpa and everyone knew my grandpa right because it was a small town there's only like two thousand people there and my grandma was white as well. Like she was from England, right? So when my grandpa would get home, these are early days in their, their life where there might have been a thousand people in town, but early days in their life, but he'd get home and if he was crying, he all he would say is, who was it? And he'd drive over their door, knock on that door, boom, 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 pound them out. That would not happen again, right? And and this is this is the culture we grew up in, right? This was uh, this is like the, the, the 70s to the 80s. And and once high school started, there was a thing that happened where my mom said to me, she goes, look at all your cousins are going to come from the Reds, right? You won't, you won't have this anymore, this imbalance. And I was like, rock on, right? Little did I know, and you probably experienced this too, that if you have cousins that live someplace else and you live someplace and you're doing well, right? Um, that there is this jealousy that happens over top of you, right? That for, and, and I see it later years, I see it because listen, I grew up, I had sidewalks, running water, sewer, hydro, and, and a house, right? I always grew up in a house, I always had sidewalks, all this good stuff. My cousins grew up without running water, without septic, without, you know, inconsistent hydro, um, running, shot down housing. And and you see that. And you didn't, no one prepared anyone for that, right? But high school was different in another way where, you know, I just took to sports, right? Um, I could not, and I say I could not sit still in a class. I couldn't sit there. I'd be kicked out. I, but if you played football, that elevated you to a position where that didn't matter, right? And that's all you knew. So you played sports for all seasons. You were always going on a team someplace. Everyone was always proud of you. And it didn't matter about school, right? And, and you just lived your life. Then all of a sudden, high school comes, and you, 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 you know, you got to go to college, something. And, you know, this is where the trouble started with me when I when we talk about these racism, because for all purposes, I was able to just be in the upfront of it, almost escaping by a narrow or, or being up front of it. But then life is in front of you and you have no fucking idea what life is. Zero, right? Zero idea. What, what, what is good. 20 years old, go back to see Gary. And I go, do you know what's in store? I think so. I go, you have no idea. You too, <laughs> you, you too, Jim Doc Siri, you guys have no idea. Zero. No, I, I tell that the, the yeah. teenagers, young 20s, they're wet behind the ears. Yeah. You don't know. You haven't lived it yet. And, and this world is going to you make your assumptions. Ass. It's going to kick think your you ass know. in ways you've never imagined. Right. And so, so in that, it did kick my ass. It went, but my my end story is I'll say that that in the chaos, um, and this is where we met, right? This is where we met. Is I'm I'm fighting and fighting for something, and you helped me realize that the fight was right here, right? This is where the fight was, and from there, in that moment in time, and this is what I do in my practice as well. Is I hear their fight, and I want to hear the whole story because it's important. Every little detail is important. But the conclusion we land on is this, is how is this going to sustain? How are you going to keep living your life fighting the way you fight you fought when you're in grade school? And, you know, I, I, I get people sometimes, they say, look, at, you deserve a break. You deserve a break from it. And, and the break comes in the way where, you know, in, in the experience of, you know, I'm, I'm privileged, I'll tell you that, to have been able to go to um, a healing lodge run by my people um, that 
took care of me better than anybody in the whole wide world has ever done in the whole, ever. I'm saying they, they are hit hands. Um, I, I did my uh, trauma regression, right? And afterwards, they knew you're sensitive, right? So essentially what they did was took you back to the worst times in your life. You make a new decision, right? And then they took you back seven generations so you could see what your original instructions were supposed to be. I can tell you this. I saw, heard, smelt, touched, and, and felt. I, I was with my ancestors, right? And more important than that, they showed me how to go back there anytime I want. And what they told me, through seven generations was my original instruction, what I was supposed to be doing here on earth, right? Prior, I was an engineering and politics, right? Control, that's what that was. I saw control, I saw a pool of control. I said, I'm good with that. And I jumped into the pool and swam around for as long as I could. So one day control was no longer, right? And in that, the healing lodge and coming out after, it was like being reborn, right? It was, so, so when we think about what was said to us as youngsters, how we, I reacted in punches and that reaction doesn't live in me anymore. It doesn't live there. There's, it doesn't exist, right? My, my feeling or need to punch anybody is absolutely zero, right? I, 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 I talk to people. Yeah. Um, I, I say we all grow up in a pond. The pond, the first pond is our family, and then our community is another pond extended from our family. And people only know their pond, That's and right. they extrapolate, and they apply what works in their pond to the community and to the broader world, and where it hasn't been functional. Yeah. And you apply the rules of your pond to another pond, so, you know, in my work with people, it's helping them step out of the pond so that they can yep. look back at it and go, I did not realize that. And, oh, yeah, now I can see the trajectory from my early childhood in this pond to my adulthood and how it's connected and how it isn't working because this isn't that yep. pond anymore. And now I have to make different choices. It, it, it is... You need help doing that, right? You need someone to talk to about that and to be with you. And look, at, I, you've spoke about the changes you've made in your own life and, and, the thing, and, I've, and I've talked about the same thing. I'm, I am very open to talk to anybody about that, right? When we're in mediation and the walls are closed, this is, this is confidential, right? Um, we, we talk. We, we talk about all of it. Right, all of it. Ours, the, the, we share. Yeah, yeah, well. we share it. We share it, and and, 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 right. and it's not because I need your help for me. It's this was my experience. Maybe you can learn by yeah. it, yeah. you know, by comparison. And I, I agree. I'm just validating that it is a struggle, but this is what we do. And, and and more importantly, I show people this, and this is something that is a thing. Where you know, I just told that story about my childhood coming into school and all this stuff. There is a point in time where if I told that story, I would become upset. I'd be angry. Um, I would lose my track and, and, and go down another way of, of kind of this vengeful talk, if you will, right? Today is just a story. That's all it is. It's just what happened. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't jar me. I'm not going to have to lay down for three hours to, to recover from it. Um, it. It's just a story, but it's, a, it's my story. It's an important story because if you're looking, if you're if you're approaching the same kind of things I was, and you see my story, pay heed, right? That that you're gonna wreck yourself on a day and the recovery is gonna be difficult. There's no need to wreck ourselves. And if we check ourselves, essentially, right? I guess that's the term that, that they say. And it's true. Check yourself out. What are you doing? Who are you doing it with and how? And is this going to sustain itself over time? And what's going to happen? Um I, I teach a, a course called Intimate Partner Violence, right? And it's a diversion program um, for folks that have gotten in trouble with their partners and um, got charged criminally. And now they give them the option to take an eight-week program, um, two hours for eight weeks to talk about what's happened, to work through it and come to a place. And when they complete it, charges are gone, right? And it's, it's interesting in there when, when men and women, right? Men and women. And the majority of people, for, for your note, for people to know that majority, nine times out of 10, nobody hit anybody, okay? 
right? Nobody hit anybody. If I was standing outside your door, dropping bees, dropping in your door, and I heard Arlene say, Gary, I'm going to kill you, right? Just and, and maybe it's for good reason, too, just so she knows. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that if I hear that and I call the police, when they get there, people should know this, that somebody is going to jail, right? Somebody's going to jail. And they're going to get charged with a level one um, charge. And then they're going to get and that their life is going to be changed forever at that point in time. That we, we help people really come to an understanding, well, how did that come to be? You've never been in jail before. And everyone's mad at first going, well, I don't know why they don't mind their own business. Why this? Because someone heard something was going to go bad and they didn't want that to be on their conscience. So they called. That's why they, that happened. Don't blame them. Blame you. And after that, it unpacks and unpacks and unpacks. And we hear what they grew up like. We hear what their perception is of the world. We hear how many times they've been wrong, Right. And now you get the product that is sitting in front of you and understand why you're sitting here. This now you, you get the product that's sitting in front of you and we understand how they got there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. And, and then we take them on a, on, a, on a path to understand how did we get mad? How did you get mad? How did you get mad and stay mad, right? Where did anger come from? Why are you sad? Why are you, why, what, well, any, any emotion that sits in our body came from someplace unless we put it there ourselves um, and, and, but not likely that the sadness and the anger and everything came from back there. Right. And, and a lot of people are hesitant to talk about their parents, right. They're hesitant to say, Oh my goodness. You know, and in, in my work with, with uh, individuals and couples, I'm always asking about what went on and, and how the parents got along. And, and I have some folks who sit in front of me and said, fine, it was good. And yeah. you know they're lying through their teeth, and so I, I you know, Jim, I drill down rather than mm -hmm. saying, you know, what was a bike like that. I, I'm more pointed. Was there any yelling or shouting? So they have to kind of give a yes or no answer. And who was there when there was yelling and shouting? And uh, was there ever any name calling? And then I, you know, if there was name calling, uh, and I were a fly on the wall, what would be the worst names I would have heard? And so I help people to be more factual versus, you know, philosophical about their upbringing, be factual about it so that they really can start to look at it more, um, more on the nose gotcha. uh, and okay. less through a lens. But these were the behaviors to which I wound up being exposed to. And when I think about those behaviors specifically, that wasn't, that wasn't good. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I share a video of yours that you did ages ago, and I think I spoke to you about it, but it, it starts out kind of talking about that abuse has long legs, right? That's, that's the statement that, that opens it up. And to know that playing that short video, four or five minutes, I think four and a half minutes long, I've seen men break down and cry in those moments from those words that were just spoken, right? And when I tell them, look at the same guy did the same thing to me. I had to hang on to it and look at it and, and see what I was going to do with that. And instead of throwing it out and calling everyone names, you know what? I took the guy's advice, right? I, I, I took the guy's advice and here I am. Here I am today. From your advice, I took that and I put that into action and I'm sitting here today. And I, and I share that with people to say, look, it, I'm not afraid to tell you I was falling down. I was down on the ground and I had I, I had nowhere to go. There's down, there's down, you're in. That there's work that needs to be done to combat what's happened back there. Right. And there's no shame in it. in the fact that it literally has happened to everyone, right. Is literally everyone has experienced some, some, some behavior, some attitude, whatever it's going to be that shaped them the way they are. That's, that's not exactly the way that they might want to be today. Right. And whether it's a little bit or a lot, we can all, none of us can sit here and say that we're, we're, we don't need self-improvement. We don't need that. And, and I add another thing, that in doing that healing, you miraculously change your life, okay? Because before, it was about pain and suffering, right? Whether it's your suffering or putting that suffering into somebody else, it was fighting, it was arguing, all it was. When you come over here and you almost like put that down and forget about it, as you're doing the activity over here, you start to become it. 
you are healing now, right? And then your life becomes about growth and healing. And and you can tell the difference. And you're just like, someone invite you back. You're like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, 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 I, everything I need is over here. Even if it isn't, I'd rather go find what I need and go back to what I know, right? And and mm-hmm. to me, that's, that's the talk I, I give folks about, listen, this is opportunity. You're not going to get me in front of you all the time. You're not going to get Gary in front of you all the time. I, I know I'm pleased with people sometimes. Like I really need you to 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 bite onto this because it's so important and it'll change everything, right? And I've sent people you know, the, to the, the, yep, sorry, the, go ahead. Yeah. The the sisters that I was chatting with uh today. Um I was saying something similar to the one sister, you know, because she's well, how is this gonna help? How is this gonna do? When am I you know coming almost from a place of anxiety around it? Yeah. yeah. And you know, sometimes all we can say is you're going to have to try it. It's like saying, describe to me the color mango. Like you got to see it. You you can't just describe something. You have to to see it. You have to experience it. And so uh, sometimes we have to do some hand holding to facilitate that. And then you get, you know, well, when will I feel better? When will I, when will it work? I said, well, it all depends on the degree to which you embrace doing these things and practicing it. And there's, you know, another couple, I said, neither of them came from a good place. Yeah, yeah. They literally didn't know how to be kind with each other. They didn't know how to check in with each other. I I gave them the simple task. When you come home at the end of your day, ask your spouse, "Is, is there anything I can do to help you? And I said to the spouse, have something that'll take no longer than five to 10 minutes, tell them what to do, do it. Don't ask questions, don't question it, do it as they've asked you, just do it. And once it's done, say thank you. That's That's it, that's it. it. And, it. and, And you know, you'd think it were rocket science because you can have so many questions around just that. And I looked and I said, you you didn't get the memo. This is this is what people being reasonable with each other actually do. These are the behaviors. We can spend 10 years in psychotherapy for this outcome, and it may never come, or I can tell you what the outcome should be. We can practice it, because here's the weird thing. When you practice these things, you start to feel better because you're acting kindly and you're you're seeing gratitude and support right. and and it it just feels better in the long run the, the the molecules that get released in your body are different than the ones of i'm angry at you right and it reminds me of dopamine a, of a, versus um yep. uh, that yeah. stra- cortisol cortisol but it reminds me of a, of a quote there's a there's a course that emily and i took last time it was for marriage it's called the mago relationships right the weekend course, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it, at the end of the weekend, you tell your partner what you need and they say whether they can do that or not and vice versa, right? And and what, it, what it's uncovering is all, and your partner needs to know what has happened in your life for real, right? And, and they need to know what you're doing about it so they can support you in it. And, and that's why couple, I meet with couples and go yep. over the history. They learn things about each other yep. they never knew. 100 percent, and god willing as a result it's it's empathy it's like now i understand why you're doing that oh my gosh yeah right it's like you know emily say for me learned that in a moment in a moment in time my anxiety can be such or i'm sitting here talking to you like this and we're talking away but i go straighten up right it just I'm, I'm, i'm out right and it, it could be for a thousand different reasons so all over the place and with Emily, sometimes in a, in a restaurant, she'll just reach across the table and touch my hand, look at me in the eyes. She'll say, look at me. And that's that's enough. That's the connection right there. And what again, back to that quote I was talking about from Imago, it was, um, I forget what the, the original name guy was, but essentially what he said was that we sit in anxiety for connection, right? So I'm sitting here waiting for Gary to connect with me, right? And when, it, when he's not connecting, I only sit... After we connect, I only sit in anxiety till the next time we connect, right? And and people live their lives like that in the sense where I need you to connect with me. Otherwise, I can't do anything, right? And 
you know, if you have reliable people around you, that could work. But the minute you're out there on your own, no one's going to know that about you, right? So either you have to, you're going to start acting anxious or you're going to acting something. The whole idea behind it, what they're really telling you is, look at you need to build connection with you, right? To know you, who you are. What, 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 like, who are you, right? And, and you have value too, and, and to know your value and, and how that is. Because a lot of people walk around without that known of value. They don't know what they can do or can't do. And when somebody else isn't given that direction, um, they shut down, right? So you're getting a lot of individuals that um, it's very difficult for them just to be for them alone. And I, I was that individual once upon a time. Today, you put a chair in the middle of that floor, in the middle of the room, say, Jim, can you sit there for three hours? No problem, fam. See you in a little bit. And I'll just sit there or go into my mind's eye and I'll just go away. That's it. Out of curiosity, you're, yeah. you're saying this, so I think I know the answer, uh, but I'm going to ask anyways. Do you meditate? Do you practice yes, any do. any kind of meditation? Yeah, so I'm a Reiki practitioner, right? Um, so I practice Reiki. So I, it's energy, right, we're, we're dealing with. In, in the sense of there's a chakra, there's a third eye, throat chakra, heart center, um, sternum. There's a sternum chakra there, stomach, and a base, right? And I walk like this. So I wake up in the morning, and I have anxiety about something. And I often do, right? That I'm able to breathe down to where that irritation is, that, that rumbling is. And I imagine myself just sitting beside it, touching it, asking it, how are you doing? We'll be okay today. Let's just go, right? And that's how I get myself up and I get myself to bed, right? Or get myself out the door. And, and sometimes even I'll park in the parking lot if we're going to if that uh, uh, place. I'll sit out there for a second and, and outside the traffic that it took to get there and that guy that, uh, that guy and all that stuff, I'll just fold into myself and I'm like, Jim, I say it out loud as a reminder of what you're doing here today, right? And, and this is what I need, right? I need sometimes direction, but I can give myself direction, right? But if I don't say it out loud, then I won't go over there and do it full out. So I'm saying to myself, Jim, go in there and help this family. That's what you're going to do, right? And you, everything else is out of your mind. I bring my good mind, right? And that was part of my, my healing that, that really brought that attention to me that we are meant to sit in our good mind, right? Our good mind, as Haudenosaunee, is free of anger, fear, negativity, any of that stuff, right? And we have an obligation, okay? An obligation to pick people up when they fell down. That's our obligation. Without judgment, without anything. I just meet you right where you're at, find out what's happened, and help pick you up and move you over. I, I appreciate you uh, speaking to uh, meditation. Uh, yep. I, I first practiced, yeah. and started learning meditation. I think I was 21 or 22. I'm 67 wow. now, do yep. the math. Uh, and since then have learned a few other styles of meditating as well. So, and it's not like I do it daily anymore, but I continually have a consciousness of that and where my emotional state is. Uh, and I'm forever um, suggesting to people that they practice uh, and it takes practice. And yep. I have some people say, well, I sat for 10 minutes and I couldn't stop thinking about things and run. well, that's okay. Yep. That's okay. Cause yep. you now realize that about your mind, how it races and, and, I direct people over. It and you'll, you, you'll catch yourself sooner and bring yourself back to where we should be in the moment. And, and so we can take what we practice in meditation, you know, whatever form it is, it could be yoga. Uh, we can take from when we're practicing it to living it throughout our life. And, and often when I'm, I'm directing clients towards that avenue, what I'm saying to them, look at when you go to the gym, right? You don't go towards the big dumb, the big 400 pound dumbbell and look up. So don't go towards a 20 minute mediation or meditation. You'll never make it. You'll never make it. You'll never make there. You go on YouTube, you type in meditation for whatever it is, is bothering you. Meditation for calm meditation for, I don't know, whatever is wrong with you. You type that in, that will be there. I guarantee you. And then there, there'll be meditations from one minute down to an hour, right? Just bite out, just take the dumbbells for now. Just take the, the five pounders and, and do a little workout. Feel that. 
tomorrow come back and you work your way up and there's no shame there's no measure in a way where sometimes i grab a three-minute meditation off of youtube just for myself for whatever reason i want and i just need to be focused i need to be there and i listen to it i'm there that's great other times i can sit for an hour and and, and be there in that moment right it's what you got they're weighing out the expectations opposed to what's good for you right and, and, you know, you, you sit there describe about meditation. You've been doing it since you're 21 years old. And so you have a whole bunch of strategies and ways that you could do, but they're all not the same, right? And also, I'm not you and you're not me. So whatever I do, and if I come into it, well, that's good. That's, that's, there's no competition. That, no, one, no, no. <laughs> there's no. Can you recognize your emotional state? And then once you do, can you settle yourself in the moment? regardless of the pressure of that emotional yeah. state. That's it. That's so it. Yeah. Um, we started off, I, I threw racism out at you, and now we're talking about meditation. <laughs> is there a connection? There is a connection because those those kids that experienced that hardship in, 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 in that young years have a very hard time finding calm today, right? They're, they're, because life is life here, right? Your work is a pressure, your family's a pressure, life is the pressure. And again, something that you learned I, before and I've learned in my life is that as busy and as much pressure as there is, there is always time. There's always time for you to take out and self-care is what we're talking about, right? Um, that's it. Self-care. I, I do training courses. So two days of training. Right. And, and so and we're talking about self-care. And one of the last things I say to everyone, I go, look at when you go home tonight, I want you to change the clothes you have on and put something else on. And they go, well, let me change my clothes. I go, look at all the energy that we talked to today sits in there. That sits in those clothes. That's what it sits. And if you go home to your family, they're going to feel that energy and you're not going to know what's going on. But if you change your clothes, then it's a clean start inside that house, right? And it, it, it because people don't think of energy, right? Uh, you know, if I come into your house and I'm all big energy and you're sitting in the back corner there by the fireplace, you know I'm in there already. You can feel me in there. You're like, holy jumping, what's come through the front door? And I'm, oh, you're like, yeah, it's <laughs> so funny that you say that and use that example. Uh, it it it, it uh, reminded me, I was going to say triggered, that, that has a negative connotation, yeah, yeah, reminded sure. me in a good way. Uh, many of the folks that I've worked with where they have their work persona and then they enter the home with that awful energy sometimes without seeing there's a break. I'm no longer at work. I am at home. And so I tell them, you know, put a, put a, a, a post-it and a pin and put it on your dashboard before entering the house, take a deep breath, literally, and say to yourself, I'm now at home. That's it. It, it is, it is okay. so quick, so simple. I'm now at home. For me, it's a reorienting exercise. Sure. So sure. that you, you can catch your mental state and say, what is the mental state that I need when I enter or past the threshold? Do I want to drag this shit? Like I've got shit on the bottom of my shoes. Do I want to drag this into my home and through the carpet because it'll stink if I do? Right? So it's 100%. a way of stopping yeah. at the threshold, scraping it off or taking off the shoes. You go in and you're coming in with, with, with a different, uh, different perspective. It, 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 to me, it's like um, bringing in bag and people are expecting to bring those bags and drop down and they just blow up and cause shit everywhere. But if you brought in different bags and balloons came out of them, right? They're like, oh, wow, look at you. I'm happy you're, I'm happy you're home. And that feeling eludes people because if I come in all shitty, no one's happy I'm home, right? No one is happy I'm home. But if I catch myself ahead of time, I'm like, you know what? These folks didn't do nothing to me. And this is who I'm working for, right? And I, you know, you catch yourself in that. You know, I, I, I go to Kitchener quite a bit. So I got all of this, this is about taking responsibility, yeah. not being self righteous, but being self conscious, uh, developing empathy. And, you know, like it, when we're in this pond, we don't have any of that. And we're just, we're just treading water to survive. That's it. You step out of that pond, you say, Oh my goodness, I need to do these things now for this pond. 
and you have such a different life. It's unbelievable. It's um again, my, my life has changed a thousand percent if that's possible in a sense of that it was down below before so it was a negative and mm-hmm. then it is rose up and it's it's all positive here right it's um i get phone calls on the regular from people that i didn't even think even knew my name or would be interested in what i'm saying and we're talking about judges and ceos and and and, and you know big big things going on in the world that they see value in in the place that i came to right and i i take that as a compliment i take that as a real life compliment um of my own working profession. Um, I was in a working profession before and I I got those accolades, but I messed that up and I fell down and I had to pick that back up and decide I'm going to do it different from that time. This time I'm going to be humble. I'm going to be just do what's right. Um, Do what's right when it needs to be done right. And, and And I've found myself in that position. Often I'm in between children's aid societies and families saying no they they need more than that. They need more, you know, and, and you could only be in that position if you are in a good mind. You can only be in that spot if you if you worked hard enough to get to the place where you can hold it steady while all this chaos is going on in order to help. And to me, that's there's nothing better. There's nothing better in the whole I couldn't imagine going back to it. You you couldn't hold the gun. I'd rather you shoot me and I'll take the bullet than go back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jim, I, I I don't even know how long we've been chatting, about 45 minutes maybe. Yeah. Uh, this is our first Facebook Live together. It's, it's my first time trying this technology and doing it. <laughs> Hopefully when I press the end button, it will all have worked and we were actually on Facebook Live. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you. I think that's a good place to for us to bring it to a close. Uh, but I would like to get back together with you again um uh it i i love i've i've look i've had the pleasure of seeing your growth over uh, a lot of years and i i just find you so impressive because i know where you came from buddy (laughs) (laughs) hey I I, i know where you came from and i know the work you put into to being your authentic self thank you Thank you. That, that does mean a lot. I appreciate yeah. it. And you know what? No, I, I, I know. I love you. I, I love you. Well, I don't know if I love you more. I'm saying <laughs> that, that, and in my troubles, that coming across you and, and getting service from you, it was a hard thing to do, but you made it that much easier and, and made sense of it and talked to me in real language real terms you even swore with me which is you know i you know, and i look at i find that when i'm when i'm with clients when they swear i swear i love swearing it, it opens the books up it opens the books up right i, I have to be so careful sometimes yeah. but i i admittedly have a potty mouth but 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 listen there's so much value in this this is like a slow it's like saying this when someone says something crazy and you just go fuck that there's value there man there's value there you're saying to them look at you've just told me something and all i can say is wow <laughs> yeah and that's all i can say because that's all there is to say about it and then that must have been really hard on you what was that like and tell me more about that and, and how is it for you today when someone does that that's that's the key that opens up the door and to say look at i know you've been dealing with those folks and those folks over here but this is me we run a different ship right here right now and I, I, I drew that, that that from you. That's the way you operate it, and I operate in the same way. Um, sometimes we we press a little bit hard, and, and look at that pressure is measured in the sense of that me as an individual, I knew I needed to press. When I look back onto it, if no one pressed me, there was nothing that was going to make me do what I was going to do. So for us to apply that press, and that pressure is coming from outside, we're just bringing attention to it, and that they have to do something about it, that that is such that that's that's the move right there that I I, I really cherish that I, I when I get someone down to that place I think of you just so you know I think of like I think of you it's like oh, it's gotten me into trouble but <laughs> but it's helped more than it's gotten me into trouble okay no but, no one's had no one's having a freight freight for me neither I'm just telling you that right now. <laughs> you know it is what we sometimes have to do we have to be very direct very forthright very honest and sometimes that's confronting um and sometimes you gotta call shit where it's shit uh um anyways yeah enough about all of that i love you yeah. i loved 
chatting with you here today. Maybe there were some things that will be helpful to others in, in what we chatted about and what you had to say. And we will come back and do this again. Um, apparently, the way I end this, I have to end the meeting for all of us. So okay. when I hit end, you and I are both gone uh, and away from each other. So I want to thank you. I'm, I'll catch up with you later. Yep. We'll, we'll uh, debrief a bit. Maybe we'll see this on you on uh, Facebook. If I can post it to YouTube, if I find a way to do that, I will. As sure. Well, and I'll share it with you. Um, but Jim, thank you. Thank you for being you and being so open. Okay. That's us right there. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Anyways, all the best to you. My love to you and Arlene and, and everybody else goes out. So take care and we'll talk soon.